All right, so here we are with the DS Speaker Shake EQ. Now this thing is actually pretty handy. Um, what's all this compression artifacts? This is a bit weird. Wait a minute. Okay, there we go, that's better. Right, so this thing, like I said, is actually pretty handy. And at first I thought it would only really benefit somebody with a shaker. But if you've got a sub and you connect that to it, it'll help flatten the sound. Let me run you through what I've done. And I spent a few days playing around with different routing setups and familiarize myself with the menu. And I think I pretty much know it inside out now. So here's the way I set it up. All right, the beginning of the audio chain. Here we have an audio interface, which is like 10 something years old. Don't really need a new one of these. Don't need any more inputs. Don't need any more outputs. No need to change it. And it's not like a phone where every year things improve, things get faster. AI doesn't work like that with these. So I haven't bothered changing it. My monitor speakers, which is why I use one of these, connect to this via XLR, which is the main outputs on the back. We have line outs, which is what is gonna be connected to the Shake EQ. And we have all these cables right here. We've got these bog standard RCA cables, these red and white ones. They're gonna go into the back of the Shake EQ. Then we have this silver one right here. That's gonna go to the Shaker amp. Then we have this blue one here, which is a Y splitter. That's actually gonna go to the DSP for the sub. And there's this black one right here, which is the power for the Shake EQ. Pretty straightforward. Also, we have a USB, which you might need if you're going to be doing some advanced stuff, which is what I've done. Okay then, now we connect everything. Subwoofer goes to output two. Main output is the shaker. And then we have power. You know, the only downside to this, when I say this, I don't mean that. I don't mean the shaky, I mean this, the video, is that I can't show you the difference that this makes to the shaker. I spent a good 15, 20, 25 minutes, maybe even a lot longer than that, trying to show how much of a difference a shake EQ makes to this thing. And none of it really even came through on camera. So that was a little annoying. And the only way you're really gonna understand how much of a difference it makes is if I describe the difference. And basically uh, it adds a thump to the bass. It's, I mean, even that's a bad description of what it does. Um, so yeah, this is why making this part of the video was a little awkward. So yeah, I'm not even sure how even somebody else making one of these videos on this thing is gonna do that bit, but uh, it does make a difference. And I have added it to the audio chain. And uh, okay, what I'll do is I'll show you the menus. Well, they're pretty straightforward to be honest. So you got to press mute first and then press bypass. Nope, I turned it off. Okay, no, what you've got to do is keep hold of mute. Ah, there we are. And then you press down on the wet dry button. So that there is a generator, a frequency generator. Press okay, starts off at 99 Hertz. Goes all the way down, all the way down to two, maybe three Hertz. So most of the menu is strictly for the shaker. It doesn't do anything to the sub, which is what I was thinking you'd be able to do. You know, like modify a few frequencies and this and that. Back into the menu. Low pass filter, that is also for the shaker, so you can set that where you want. And the next one down is correction amount. So that basically sets your equalization from zero to I think 150%. So with that, you can decide on how much of the correction you want applied. And I think it sets this itself. So you put these on your chair and you let it analyze the vibrations. It asks you to do the shaker three times. So you basically move these into three positions. And once you've done that, everything's sorted. And the next one down is version. So that tells you the firmware version that is currently on your Shake EQ. And the next one down underneath that is dim. And with this, you can set the brightness of the display. And under dim, we have format. So with format, what you can do is plug in one of these guys and with that, you can obviously update the firmware. And also, you can get a measurement export. And with that, it will tell you the before and after changes that it's made. And underneath format, we have monitor. So this is the input gain monitor. If I go into that, you'll see there's nothing on there. But if I press play. And that is with my Windows main volume at 50%. Also, that was just my main monitors. The subs not on, in case you were wondering. 
And speaking of sub underneath mon, we have sub. So we're going to that. Uh, this A plus B basically combines the inputs. So we've got A and B, put them together, and then that gives you your output. Or you can have it as separate inputs for both. You've got separate inputs, but I've combined them. Also, there's a microphone you can plug in and it'll calibrate your sub for you. So you plug it in like that. So right now what it's doing is it's sending out a signal to your sub. And what you want to do is that input gain bar that I showed you, that's going to start showing once you raise the volume. And when this stops flashing, that's the minimum volume level. Really, you want a little bit more gain than that. But I left mine at minimum. It makes no difference to the overall gain. Uh, it's just for calibration. Uh, once you've done all that, it will calibrate and you're sorted. And then under sub, we have delay. So you can set your delay manually, which is what I did. And I've got mine set at five milliseconds to match the rest of my system. And I think that is all when it comes to the main parts of the menu. But if I go into generator and I keep hold of some of these buttons on here, so the ones labeled one, two, three, that allows me to EQ. And here we have the frequency. And I'm pretty sure this is just for the shaker and not the sub, but you're allowed three presets. And also what we have on the remote control, top right hand corner, I think there's a bit of plastic on this, but what we have there is wet dry. So if I keep hold of that, we've got this bass extender. So if you're listening to older music, something that doesn't really have much of a bass line or maybe kick drums or anything, it'll bring down in frequency those more mid bassy kick drums. So you can set that to low, medium or high. Also, if I don't keep hold of the wet dry button, if I just press them like normal, mine I've set to wet too. So like kick drums, for example, normally with the shaker, they're very low frequency and you don't really feel them. It adds more thump to them. That's the only way I can describe it, more thump. Now, has the shake EQ benefited your subwoofer? You're probably wondering, well, here we have the 18 inch subwoofer with a grill in front of it to protect it from the cats that I've got on this 128 gigabyte memory stick, which is kind of overkill for this. What I've got, if I plug this into the back of here like that, and then I restart it like that, what you'll see is stony three times. And what it's done now is it's loaded some presets I've set for the sub with their last firmware update. What they did was they added support for movie soundtrack equalization. So what you do is you click on this link right here and then you click on this. If you scroll down, it gives you this information right here. So I thought to myself, hmm, what I'll do is I'll just add some gain to the lower frequencies because I needed a bit more gain. And this device doesn't exactly give your subwoofer gain unless you do it manually like I did. Now, the main reason I'm keeping this in my audio chain is because that subwoofer I made is tuned or meant to be tuned at 16 Hertz. It might be a little lower than that, but uh, check this out. Look, low shelf frequency 10. What does the 10 stand for? 10 Hertz. I can now EQ from 10 Hertz upwards, whereas previously it was 20 Hertz upwards. So the subwoofer signal is still coming through this DSP right here. And there are still a few changes I've made through this. But yeah, from a good, I'd say 14 Hertz where we're sorted. And it slopes off around 30 Hertz, but I've got the main monitors which take over from there. And here we have a 124 octave smoothing. And the dips right here are about, what is that, like 2 dB at the most. And uh, from 30 odd Hertz, I don't really care about because that's where the mains kick in. So if you've got a shaker and you're wanting to give this a go, give it a go. If you've got a shaker and a sub and you're wanting to do what I've done, this is still definitely worth it. Especially if you've got a low frequency sub like me. If you've got just a sub alone, then this could come in handy. You might want to give it a go. There are EQs you can use on Windows, which might allow you to EQ between 10 and 20 Hertz, maybe even lower than that. But you can't use an audio interface the way I'm using it to do that just doesn't work. Other than that, that has been this DS speaker shake EQ and I'm glad I have it. Catch you in the next one.